Not just any university. Not Minerva, not Minerva. I'd say you are the person that I am the most open and honest with. I actually created my own company. Casually, and... as you do. No, like, little inspirational talk. Like, you can genuinely make anything happen. Hey there, guys, and welcome back to Unshaded Jade. And welcome to... The man, the myth, the legend, the special guest. Jade's brother. My brother Paul. <laughs> it's been a long time. It's been a long, long time. Here. I hope people think I look different because I don't think <laughs> they do, you know? You know I still, you still get people saying you know that you are Jade or Jade's you're, brother. You're just so iconic, Paul. It's ridiculous. Yeah, it's like, you're the guy from Swapping yeah. Homework. But it's ridiculous because what, have I not aged? Wow. <laughs> His life has changed a lot in the last few years. Just a little. Just, just a, little. a little. Some people might actually know him now as the two. Pink guy. <laughs> it's so funny, it's isn't it? Crazy. That is so funny. Yeah. yeah. In the last year, Folk has become an entrepreneur extraordinaire. Well, oh, God. I mean, I don't want to go that talk far. About it today. I don't go that far. But yeah. Yeah. Let, I mean, let's, let's dive let's right dive in. in. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I asked on Instagram about an hour ago, to be honest, very <laughs> spontaneous, for any questions that you guys wanted to hear me and Folk discuss, talk about. So. Yeah, I think one of the main questions is... Oh, we're going straight in. What are you doing with your life? <laughs> like, what have you done is that since like a, finishing... What are you doing with your life? Or what are you doing nah, with your life? No, it's like, a, I mean, you're doing really sick things. So, what, what are you doing with your life? Being in video. Yeah, see? Very sick. It is the peak of your life right here. Uh, so, um, yeah, I mean, what, what I'm doing is I'm, so I'm studying at university. You're not just any university. <laughs> and not just any university. Not Minerva, not Minerva. Uh, Although he did get in. Smart boy. <laughs> yeah, but uh, I chose good mental health. Uh, no. <laughs> uh, <laughs> didn't want to burn out at uni. Savage, but true. Um, yeah, so I mean, well, to give a little bit of history back. So I was meant to study University of Bath, then decided I didn't want to go down the traditional path. So I took a gap year. One of the best decisions I've ever made is like, I mean, you took a gap year as well. It's kind of like, I feel like I'm just copying you basically. <laughs> and then um, I decided I wanted to join like an untraditional university. So I applied to Minerva, but I also applied to another university, which is based in Berlin. And it's called Code University of Applied Sciences. Um, and that's where I happen to study right now. Uh, so I just, well, I finished my first year and now I'm in the second year and Ever since joining the university, I actually created my own company. Um, Casually, and... as you do. <laughs> and not just any kind of company, like the most creative, cool, interesting company ever. Oh, yeah, keep, keep gassing it up, <laughs> go on. Uh, so our company is, drum roll, uh, we sell... <laughs> oh, I feel like I'm on a game show. Uh, I've got one. Oh. We actually we sell flavoured toothpicks. <laughs> just using this as an app. For more context, like, it's insane how well this company has done like he started it with a few friends from uni back in may uh back in april back in april yeah. and since then now you have 500,000 followers yeah, on just TikTok. Hit it. just hit it let's go insane <laughs> when macklemore tries your flavored toothpicks mid-concert you have a flavored toothpick <laughs> Tastes like, I'll be really honest do you sell these do i have to be nice oh my god it's the best toothpick i've ever had <laughs> James Corden wanted yes. to try more of our toothpick flavors. Oh, uh, we actually have some other flavors if you'd like to try. Some more. <laughs> so we, we're donating all the profits to the ch same charity here. So. To me, surprising my TikTok crush Lauren Gray at the world's biggest marketing event, which I crashed to do my own marketing. We did it! We perfected the recipe for KSI's prime flavored toothpick. KSI asked us to make a prime flavored toothpick. Come on, Tim. Shark Tank Dragon, Deborah Meaden, to get our business on UK Shark Tank. This was her response. Oh, so you're an absolute icon. I've watched Dragon's Den forever. We sent a toothpick to space in Portugal, casually. Jade, Jade was part of that. Yeah, it was mission. really cool. Went yeah. to the highest mountain in Portugal, sent it up to space. This is a flavored toothpick. I'm gonna send it to space. And when it lands back on Earth, I'm gonna taste it. We bought a 2000 liter balloon strong enough to bring this peach flavored toothpick 35 kilometers up to the stratosphere. Then the helium balloon will pop and the toothpick will crash back down to Earth, break only by a parachute. So let's see if a peach flavored toothpick that's been in space tastes any different. In three, two, one. It doesn't sound real, does it? It, it sounds like sound something real. you're going to tell your grandkids. No, you know? I, I feel like 
that's like way better than any GCSE physics or like A level <laughs> physics, right? Like I feel like we proved physics knowledge right there. Big time. No, there were like some big calculations to actually no, for figure sure. out. Like, like wind speed yeah, and stuff. Yeah, yeah. It was a lot. Yeah. There was so much that could have gone wrong. Oh yeah. I'm... <laughs> Who's tried this toothpick other than Jacob Chase, which you know um, is the best. So basically, I mean, the way we got big from the start, like it kind of exploded straight away. It was unreal, really. So two weeks in, I saw a video on the Sidemen's YouTube channel. Uh, so they're like the biggest <laughs> UK group of YouTubers. And KSI, who is like the most subscribed UK YouTuber, uh, he had a toothpick <laughs> in his mouth in the video. And I was like, well, how random is that? And I was like, how insane would it be mm. to make a TikTok challenging him yeah. to try one of our flavored toothpicks? And it went completely viral. Like I couldn't believe it. Um, literally overnight, it then got like a million views and like 80,000 people just tagging him. And I was like, insane. damn, like this insane. might actually work. And then we ended up getting him to try our flavored toothpicks. He gave such a, like an insane reaction. Um, and so that kind of really set us off. And since then, we've been getting like some insane celebrities to try it. We went to a Macklemore concert and got Macklemore <laughs> to try a flavored toothpick. I was there. Yeah, like <laughs> mid-concert, like in front of like, <laughs> everyone. We had like this sign. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I got, we had this huge cardboard sign, like, want to try a flavored toothpick? Yeah. Um, and he, he actually thought it was like spiked with something at first. Yeah, also it's like Berlin. Yeah. So you like never know what you're going to try in Berlin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? And uh, we got James Corden to try a flavored toothpick. So, cool. so yeah, it's just really been insane. Like, and it's just the ghost of really like show the power of social media. Mm -hmm. Cause like social media has really been our driving force. And Falkert is the king of editing short form. No, like I'll stop. I, no really, like I think, I mean, so much of the questions are gonna be about our relationship and how it's changed and we can get into that later. But I think especially the last year, I've really felt like I have so much to learn from you. Oh, stop it. Well, I learned from the best. Oh, stop it. Best. No, but seriously, like, yeah, I don't know, you've taught me so much about short form editing and like, I don't know, just your your mind is so brilliant when it comes to it. You just know how to keep people engaged or so Basically, I have a really bad attention span, so it's just, <laughs> it just works well for that. Maybe you can give a little description of why you decided to start a toothpick company, because it does feel quite random, right? So, yeah, I mean, yeah, it's quite a random product, isn't it? Uh, so the, the inspiration for flavoured toothpicks is Basically, there's the big chewing gum market. For 100 years, there's never really been any alternatives to chewing gum. Uh, and this is where the flavored toothpick comes in because it's much better for the environment. But forget that, it's just much, <laughs> looks much cooler because toothpicks used to be cool back in the day, back in there's, the 50s yeah, and 60s. Yeah, there's a lot of like gent old gentleman culture around toothpicks that was yeah. part of like the inspo. Yeah. And it was like one of your founders was inspired in the first year of code, right? Mm -hmm. I was like inspired by, um, I think you, I think he had a challenge to make an everyday household product. Exactly. Cool. Yeah, it's like, it's bits. inspired by like, if you know like liquid death, which is just canned water or like Dr. Swatch soap, which is literally just like soap, a bar of soap, but like giving it like some really cool like, branding, kick ass yeah, marketing yeah, yeah. and making what seemingly on the surface is quite boring but like actually make it cool. But also like this has not just happened. Falkert has worked his ass off this year. It's insane. Like not only does he edit all the time and like he's always coming up with interesting ideas. Just like you. <laughs> <laughs> what can we say? Um, no, but like he's so ballsy. Like he puts himself out there so much. Like the other day you went to a Gary Vee event, a free, free event in London. And who do you, who do you get to try it? <laughs> not Gary Vee, no, no we, we got Gary, isn't it actually insane, Gary so Vee. Who's like this big business mogul, like always has opinions on what's gonna pop off. No, li like little inspirational talk, like you can genuinely make anything happen. Like I never in the, probably the first place would have thought though, like you could get all these big celebrities to try your product, but it's possible. Like I genuinely manifest this stuff for days leading up to it. And you just have to have the confidence to seize the moment. Like, genuinely anything's possible and yeah I, I just think you know chase your dreams like you can really really do anything and yeah. just manifest you just need to stop caring what other people think yeah like i go to an event like this and like i mean i personally i do feel it myself like i feel nerves yeah, to yeah. put my arm up yeah keep it's it scary. Up, and ask a question like oh what if people are going to judge me like yeah what if you they don't want to try it but just remove the negativity and 
because in the end, nobody cared, and everyone actually was very inspired by the whole thing. Yeah, what, so, like, came up to you, right? Yeah, everyone Ooh, after was amazing. coming up to me, like, oh my god, what you just did there was incredible. And, yeah. like, yeah, just, yeah, so all these negative thoughts in your mind are just thoughts in your mind. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, are, are not necessarily true. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. Okay, I have so much I could ask about that, but I don't want the whole thing to just be about your business I thought the whole success. thing was going to be an ad. No, no, no. <laughs> Let's stop it. No, but like genuinely the reason I am doing what I'm doing is because of Jade being in this whole social media space. Like she has stop. literally you... trained me to be doing what I'm doing in marketing. Aww. Like I mean, really I feel exposed like independent me to the whole of space. me though. Like you have such a unique editing style. You have such like a way of thinking outside of the box with these things. I wonder like even independent of me doing social media, I think you would have found this eventually anyway. But I, I would say like I've taken inspiration from a lot of people on social media, but like 100% you're one of the people that's inspired me the most. And hmm. I mean like allowed me to then be inspired by these other people. Yeah. Like you really opened my eyes to even enter the space. For context in Folk's Gap Year, he learned how to edit. Like he focused on that. I would say almost more than any other skill. You 100%, really 100%. develop your own editing style. And I think it's also such, such a testament to untraditional paths, right? Taking time out. You stayed at home most of the year and just like cared for your mind, cared for your mental health and had such like a massive self growth journey and learned this incredible skill, which is now your entire job. Mm -hmm. And so it's just, yeah, it's crazy thinking 100%. about how doing something that you feel you need, following your intuition led you to this part. 100%, like, because uh, for me, like editing has always been like a huge passion of mine. Um, and so then taking the gap year to like really follow this passion, not knowing exactly where it would take me, if it would ever lead me to a path of like actually making money, mm. but just by following that instinct has led me down this path. Yeah. Uh, so I, I think truly like actually giving your passion a chance and giving it the time is such a worthwhile pursuit. Mm-hmm, wow. So inspirational for me. No, stop it, stop it. <laughs> okay, we're gonna, we're gonna ask some really very different questions. <laughs> I'm ready for anything, hit me. Mm. One question, which is relevant to what you're talking about is, how did you both gain clarity about your university choices? I feel so uncertain and swamped even when thinking about it. And I deeply relate to this, and I know that you deeply relate yep. to this, yep. because in both of our gap years, we were very lost and we both ended up doing the untraditional thing, which is terrifying to decide. So maybe you can speak a bit more about your journey with that. Yeah, so, yeah, I mean, because I felt like I was already being pushed down the path of going towards a traditional university. And like I, for a lot of people, that that is the right choice. But for me, I feel like it was always this gut feeling, uh, like in the back of my mind. First place, it was University of Bath. and. I just had a feeling this wasn't the one. And it was, especially when I went to visit the campus, I feel like the best thing you can do is really like envision yourself in that environment and by visiting it, visualizing it more. Because mm -hmm. um, that's when you can really get, get a picture of if this is the right place for you. Mm. Like it's kind of a, a feeling at the end of the day. Um, and my intuition and gut feeling was telling me this, this isn't the right choice. So luckily- but you didn't know what that was. Luckily right? I was yeah. like supported by you, by mom and dad to then make that decision because it was a tough decision. Yeah. Then I heard about this untraditional university. It was because I was actually interrating at the time and I went to visit Berlin mm -hmm. and I went to visit the campus. Mm -hmm. And then that's the moment where it was like, uh, yeah. You okay. could imagine yourself. That, right? Yeah, that yeah. was, uh, yeah. hit me that, yeah, mm -hmm. like I could really envision this and it just felt right. So I think following your intuition and listening to your gut, I think they are like the most powerful yeah. forces in the universe. And, and you can't always explain it or rationalize you can't. it, right? Yeah, yeah, it's not yeah. all rational. Yeah. Like, um, yeah, and I think, yeah. The, yeah. And I think there's also something to say for like fighting for these opportunities because, oh my God. <laughs> yeah, I know I spilled some as well. Oh. We're, we're spilling the tea we're spilling physically the tea and metaphorically. <laughs> I think a lot of people have in their minds that opportunities like that aren't for people like me based on, you know, how you grew up or like the people you know. And I just would always say don't limit yourself because there are infinite scholarships. There are like, you know, ways of accessing these opportunities. There's like people you can get in contact with who can help you realise these dreams. But first you have to be able to imagine it for yourself. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And yeah it's just like i don't know have more conversations dare yourself to dream bigger yeah and then in my gap year very similar to you i just had this gut feeling that bristol wasn't really for me but i didn't know 
what was for me. I almost considered taking another gap year. I realized how much I was learning from just traveling and meeting people from around the world. And Yeah, and I think yeah. something amazing that you can do as well is like asking people or like what I did was like asking people at the University of Bath and like visiting my friends at mm -hmm. university. It gives you more of a picture. I think yeah. you are someone at Minerva oh, yeah. before yeah. joining. Yeah, 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 I had a chat with someone. And you also had a chat with someone at Bath, like mm -hmm. a call. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think those sort of things make a huge difference to sure. knowing if it is the right or yeah. wrong decision. Oh, someone's so cute. I just hope you can live near each other in the future. Sibling synergy is so revitalizing. Oh, that's really sweet. That's so sweet. No, I, that's I'm, so true. It is so true. Like, I miss folks so much when we're apart. Like, I just feel like whenever we're together, it's always... It's always so good. It's so no, light. So nice. Like it's so always effortless. Like banter and like effortless. Yeah, yeah. But we also talk about deep stuff. Like it's so healing. No, no, it's genuinely like genuinely. really just so feel good. Yeah. When we're, when we're together, yeah. Like. like we're such good friends. I think like you never know when you're coming into adulthood how your relationship with your siblings is going to change. But I think it's been really amazing. 100%. How is your relationship evolving through growing into adulthood? <sighs> I don't know. I mean like it feels like we've been close for a long time. I, I don't know. It doesn't. But I feel like we've had dips of closeness. I guess. Like I would say, I don't know if you feel the same, but I would say my first year of university, I was so overwhelmed. I just moved to San Francisco. I was. I had two roommates. I was put in this community of two hundred people from all around the world. I had so much work. It was insane, and. I just did not have the capacity to call my family that much and also didn't prioritise it. And so I think I called you a lot less. But I also think you were going through some stuff at like school and just... Mm -hmm. Pretty isolated yeah, myself. Yeah, you, you, yeah, I feel like mental health was like not the best at that time. But mm -hmm. we hadn't fostered the closeness for you to be able to like confide that in me. Yeah. And so then I felt distant from you because I felt like yeah, you that's were... True. Yeah, that's, that's true. Yeah, like struggling, but you weren't really like talking to me about it. And then obviously COVID happened. And like lockdown was also not the most beautiful time. I mean, I think it's hard because I feel like we, we I mean, yeah, like we've kind of been far apart. A yeah, lot, a for the lot last, of last five years. Last five years. Yeah. But then I, I feel like, especially over the last three, four years, probably, I feel like we have maintained pretty good closeness, like mm -hmm. just through having like long like video calls. If mm -hmm. we don't see each other, like ca long catch ups when we do see each yeah. other. Yeah, he literally only calls me when he's got way back on the way back from the gym. <laughs> literally. It's like <laughs> if, I, if I see an incoming call from Paul, I'm like, oh, he's just finished the gym. <laughs> Which I'm like, it's fine, I'll pick up because well, it's hard to at get At least I go to the gym a lot, so then I call you a lot. Ah, uh, <laughs> get those gains. <laughs> but I don't know, I feel like I. I come out of the gym and I'm like, oh, that would be a great time to call you. <laughs> I don't know why, it's always that. I often talk online about my idea of like friendship. And I see, I see friendship as like you in the middle and you have concentric circles around you of like closeness with friends. And I think it's impossible to have more than like three to five people in your super, super close circle mm. at any one time. And I, I count this super close circle as I always know roughly how they are. I always know roughly what they're doing at any time. And I have a few friends like that. But I would say that you're in my like closest concentric circle. Like I always roughly know like how you are, how you're doing. Like I feel like we both mutually really make sweet. that effort, which is, yeah. is really nice. No, and like I would say you are the person that I am the most open and honest with hmm. like like genuinely you just create such a safe space for me that like i would be 100 percent honest with you that like with probably my closest friends i'd be like 90 percent mm. honest but like sometimes reserve that little bit but like uh, yeah that's what i really appreciate about our relationship as well yeah me too it's like I, I don't know if every sibling kind of has that where they can like yeah. fully be vulnerable and fully be themselves and you're just like insane at advice as well like if i'm going through something or whatever like you just know what to say what would be your reaction if your siblings started dating someone you didn't like um oh. i feel like i've had that <laughs> <laughs> oh god can i say that yeah yeah no, you can say that yeah go on so speak your truth i think this is such a hard situation i think whether it's with friends or siblings, if they're with someone that you don't like, hmm. it puts you in a tough position because obviously you want the best for them, but also they need their independence and they have to make choices for themselves. Yeah, which aren't always the right choices. Which aren't always the right choices, but they need to make them in order to learn and grow. 
and there's something to say for stating an unwanting opi unwanted opinion that makes that person close up to you and like end a relationship with you. So the way that I would act is always support. You know, I'm like, make your own choices, live your best life, have your fun, learn your lessons, but asking prompting questions in a really non-leading manner. Yeah. But those non but those questions do have an intention that hopefully that person can't feel, but like is there. And yeah, if you ask enough questions, I think the person will eventually realise themselves. Yeah. No, and I feel like that is something that happened. In yeah, a way. it's just like, like you need validation, right? Yeah, I mean yeah. like because I was in a relationship, yeah. I wasn't sure if it was serving you. Yeah, if it was serving me in the right way. And yeah, I think just by speaking to you, that kind of confirmed my initial belief oh i just love you guys so much these questions are so cute things that you value in your relationship and things that you love about them oh so yeah i would definitely say i value how open and honest we can be i mean i think you ask great questions like i don't i don't I feel judged mm. um very supportive questions that I yeah like some probing questions no but I feel like I feel really similarly with you like I don't know if you ever met Fogg in person maybe you will in the future because he's the famous toothpick guy but like I think you're just you just have such a chill disposition you are so relaxed yeah I'm very relaxed you're so I'm relaxed. literally in sweatpants I, you know I actually live in sweatpants Fogg doesn't wear anything else but <laughs> joggers yeah like I'm doing like a a business meeting in, in joggers. Yeah. <laughs> but <Vulcan> loves loungewear. <laughs> I'm still chill, but I think in my mind I'm quite controlling about things. And I think you're very relaxed about things. And so I think I mean, we're quite a nice I think mix. I think I come across comfortable. I don't know, I would say I feel stressed all the time. Like, <laughs> just like thinking all the time. Vulcan came to me the other day. Can I say that? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Vulcan came to me the other day and he's like, to reveal something to you and I'm like oh my god okay what and he's like I've realized that I have never known how to relax in my life and I've never actually felt relaxed but I have finally learned how to relax it's like I've finally learned how to not be stressed that's pivotal that's yeah. great I don't know I've realized I was, uh, I was just carrying a lot of stress without yeah. like like the whole hustle culture movement we've both fallen really prey to that at times the yeah. whole like hustle self-improvement wake up at 5 a.m and like change your life for the better and make loads of money and and i think almost in a way everyone should have that phase because it teaches you so much so much about discipline and good habits and it's wonderful to like try and achieve your dreams but there are massive downsides that no one talks about which is lending itself to this 100%. the idea that like you are always switched on you're never actually truly relaxed yeah. you know no and like i just I had pretty bad mental health for a while yeah. in this kind of toxic mindset. Um, and it's only when, now that I'm out of it that, like, I have a lot better mental health. And in a way, like, I feel like I produce better work by, in a way, doing less. But, like, yeah. because my mind's just a lot clearer, better mental health, I, like, I actually I prioritise sleep a lot more, yeah. meditate more. So the work that I do do is... Much better, and like yeah. working in a creative space, it's essential. It's so essential, it's essential. because you can't tell your story if you're stressed. And increased output does not equal increased output. Increased input. No, <laughs> there are so many Dutch-related questions, so maybe yeah, we can talk about that. Oh well, let's not get why, onto that. No, I'm interested. Why are you called Folker? Like um, you have a create like a really unique name, right? And I have a basic name. <laughs> well, mine comes with challenges now. <laughs> I mean, so, well, yeah, so my name uh, originally comes from my granddad, my mum's dad. Um, yeah, who had the name Folke, and unfortunately he died uh, at the age of 50 before we were born. Uh, and it was, it's quite um, meaningful, actually, because my mum has three sisters, yeah, three sisters, and um, they agreed that the first son that one of them had would be called Folke. After their dad, And yeah. uh, why well, won the race, so... <laughs> Um, <laughs> I'm just picturing you as a sperm. <laughs> I was a far swimmer. Uh, <laughs> it has a Frisian name. 
uh, from the north of the Netherlands. I, I don't even think I can actually say my name fully correctly. Folkert. I remember as a kid, Folkert. I couldn't write it. I had to get someone else to write it. But it's tough in England, right? It's tough because everyone no mispronounces. No one knows your name. Paul's is the funniest thing ever. Yeah. Is that he looks like such a basic white yeah, British yeah, yeah, guy. Yeah, everyone's like expecting, everyone's expecting like Ben, Henry, Will. Henry, Joe. Or Henry. I know you. You do? Love we met. Oh my God, you're Henry. No, my name's not Henry. <laughs> That's embarrassing. <laughs> Who's Henry? Don't know who Henry, Henry. is, but... Show it, Henry, mate. <laughs> Bambino, Becky. <laughs> yeah, and he's in Falkirk and it's like a bit of spice. They're like, oh. No, but I, and it's gotten to the point where I've simplified it and I just say it, folk. Yeah. And, and they still were caught off guard. <laughs> like, they always have a double take. They're yeah. like, oh, because they realise they have to actually listen, you know? That way you can just say like that again. Conscious effort to <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Trying to be polite, as English people are. <laughs> well, what's your name to me? Oh, God. <laughs> no, you're not getting me to say it. Yeah, so Jade, Jade has a thing for calling me nicknames, and they evolve every few years. <laughs> the interesting thing is, she calls me a nickname, everyone else copies that nickname, <laughs> so then she gets bored of it and moves on to a new one. So she was the one that's called me Folk in the first yeah, place. Yeah, now everyone calls me Folk. Everyone calls me Folk. And now she's decided <laughs> to call me Folly. My oh. Folly. <laughs> Yeah, so imagine I have to deal with I mean, no, no. This is the least favorite thing about about you. It's the the names. You don't like that I call you Folly. You love it. My Folly. Yeah, I feel like a little puppy with you. Didn't I? <laughs> Just got the ick. Ooh, what's your love language? Oof, uh, physical touch. No, no, it's not physical touch. It's quality time. I don't know why I said physical touch, but I do <laughs> like physical touch. <laughs> Was that meant to be quality time or physical touch? <laughs> Falker is an excellent hugger. <laughs> no, really, though. I don't even know what it takes to make a good hug. Like, it doesn't feel awkward. It feels really, like, I don't know, like, real and, wholesome. like, wholesome, but, like, like held. You feel quite held. It's a new one. Fair. Add that to my bio. I'm a good hugger. What do you fight about? Literally nothing. We fight about who can use the ring light. <laughs> no. Okay, we're gonna do a final rapid fire three. What is it? Okay, okay, let's do okay. it. Okay. Yep. Folk. Yep. How do you not obsess over intrusive bad thoughts? Well, this isn't quick fire, is it? I mean, this is a tough question. <laughs> this is something I'm still trying to uh, figure out. <laughs> oh, it's hard. But I feel like it's you've, hard. you've thought about that. I mean, yeah. You've thought about that. Because I have. I think I've had yeah, tough, intrusive thoughts for a, for a long time. I think, A, talking about it is a huge thing. Um, just kind of getting it out mm. off your chest. Mm, uh, it's hard. It is hard. It is very hard opening up to people. Uh, hopefully everyone's got someone that they can open up to in some way. I think speaking about it, I think perhaps journaling about it. Um, I mean, I think it's important not to distract yourself from those thoughts mm. because I don't know if you're ever going to resolve them otherwise. Like, mm. like I, I've had Dude. negative thoughts, like insecurities that when I distract myself from them with like social media, like then it's, it's hard to like actually resolve those things. So I think giving them the time and part of that is like things like therapy. Uh, I think is, is yeah. a great thing. And that's yeah. also a way to talk about it. Oh, he's so wise. Well, I'm, well, I know I I don't I wouldn't say I've got it figured out like yeah but like I don't know this is really it's really good advice it's also like I mean not to be that person but like I think it's so refreshing for men and boys to also acknowledge that it's so fine to like have bad mental health at times and yeah. like no, it's and, and reach out to people and talk to people 100%. and like go to therapy and like that's not an indication of weakness 100%. it's like literally what is stronger than facing your inner demons like there is nothing harder 100%. in this world yeah. are you both vegan yes no. Woo! how many years have you been vegan now time goes so quickly i think four years which is pretty pretty it's insane mad. actually it's weird to think in february i will have been vegan for seven years seven years oh my god time seven years. what's your favorite thing to do together well i, I have one but i don't want to bias you so you don't want to hear what you're gonna say I don't know. I mean, like, I gen, gen, genuinely, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. genuinely would say, like, uh, favorite thing really is just deep chats. Literally, I just oh, love chatting. Oh, with you. okay. I thought you were gonna say something else, so I thought I was saying the wrong Literally, answer. That's it. It's so good. We just sit in, the, in the, like, I don't know, in the evening. Yeah, it's just like chat. chat. But not even. It doesn't have to be a deep chat. No, it's like, just, any, chat. just chat. Just chat. Yeah. Like we just have so such good chill. conversations about everything. And do you have a final parting word? 
to all the budding entrepreneurs. All the budding entrepreneurs. Yeah. Um, I think, especially while you're young, I think there's no better time but to go for it. Mm. I think even if you fail, which I obviously don't like thinking about failure too much, even if you fail, there would be so much to learn. Yeah. Um, not too much to lose, hopefully, uh, at a young age because um, you've still got your whole life ahead of you. Like, this is the best time to go after whatever that thing is and chase after that thing. Um, and I think manifesting that desired outcome, that success that you want. What does manifesting look like to you? So manifesting for me is, like, I try to imagine myself getting that desired outcome um, as vividly as possible. So I imagine the sort of feeling I will have in the build up to that thing happening, the sort of feeling I have after that thing happening and while that thing happens, um, just imagining in so much detail, like, I don't know, your response, like other people's response. Um, and I think like, yeah, just like really, I don't know, like when you can really like tap into your subconscious mind and like literally thinking about things like the nerves or the excitement, all those feelings where your body literally feels like it's mm. already happening, mm. that primes you into thinking it's going to happen. Um, and I've just found that is so powerful. Like that is, I would really put down that down as the reason um, why like this year has been insane for the Toothpick business. So proud of you, Phil. Mad. But I've got you to thank. Got you to thank. Wouldn't be here without you. Nah, we spur each other on. It's beautiful. Do you know, one day I would love to do a video with you just talking about like Pick'em and the business, but also your journey through that. Because I think there's so much that you've already learned and like could say to inspire people. You need to start a podcast. <laughs> but yeah, I wish everyone an amazing 2024. Um, whether you've got big goals, small goals, I think I think it's definitely within your ability to, to go and grab those goals sure. and uh, just wish you all massive success, whatever that looks like for you, whether it's good mental health, uh, academic success of some kind, getting the grades that get you to mm -hmm. the next stage, whatever that is, university, job, whatever it is you want in 2024, A, it's possible, and B, I think, I mean, especially watching Jade's videos, I think you can make it happen. <sighs> Too good. <laughs> and last, folk. What was your casual magic today? Oof, casual magic today. Um, <laughs> well, I mean, so I went to the gym and then on my way walking back from the gym to home, uh, I was just being like really present and I just got, I don't know, I just like, it was just a really pleasant walk. Like I just Amazing. had a, I don't know, like I was genuinely thinking like, Oh, it's really nice that I get to do this walk like pretty much every time I go to the gym. Amazing. Like I was literally, I was walking yeah. like no stimulation at all, like not listening yeah. to a podcast. Yeah, just taking just, in what was there. Just taking in everything. And uh, Beautiful. it was really nice. Yeah. Oh, wow. Thank you so much for coming on. Thanks for having this me. It's been, so it's been a while. Nice. It feels like it's full so circle. Nice. You know? this, was, this was so spontaneous too. Before we end this, I'd love to know what your casual magic was for today and if you've got any 2024 goals hmm. yeah cool yeah comment down below it felt you'll be in the comments <laughs> apparently i'm in the comments <laughs> yeah. so uh, bye <laughs>